Hi, I'm Tommy Thomas, and I want to welcome you back to the show, How to Beat the Odds. If you've watched this show before, you know that I begin every show talking about the devil and the demons and how real they are. Why do I do that? Because I know what they tried to do to keep me from God's will, plan, and purpose for my life, and I know they're doing the same thing to you. They don't want us to find out what God has called all of us to do. And that's to share the gospel, the good news, with a dying and hurting world. There are people hurting all over. You don't have to go to Africa to be a missionary. There are people right here in Dallas, Fort Worth on the streets that are homeless, on drugs, looking for the next high. No place to lay their head down at night except in a shelter or on the streets. You know, when we get a hold of God's truth and how much God loves all of us and how we're called to go out and and share not only the gospel, the love of Jesus, but we're called to help people, to reach out to hurting people. You know, Isaiah Robertson has the house of Isaiah. He was on the show a couple of months ago, and, and he has a house where it has about 70 young men, or men of all different ages. They come there on drugs, alcohol. Many of them have just gotten out of jail, and, and it's a house where they can come and work and find out what, the, what God's love is all about. They'll learn scriptures, they go to prayer meetings every day and hear the word of God preached, and they actually work like out on a ranch, and they'll work hard, and, and Isaiah Robertson will minister to these young men in this program, and, and they'll be rehabilitated, not just because of a program, because they'll find out God's principles and the word of God and the promises that are for all of us. Yes. And they'll realize that those promises are for them personally. Not just a minister or someone sits in church. They're for all of us. God loves every one of us. Before we're born again, before we become a Christian, Jesus died on that cross for all of us while we were yet sinners. It's the goodness of God that leads all of us to repentance. When we come to the place where we know how much God loves us, we don't want to keep doing the same old things we used to do. When you go to AA and they stand up and they say, I'm an alcoholic. No, when God sets you free through the power of Jesus Christ and his blood that he shed for us on that cross at Calvary, we're no longer an alcoholic. Amen. We can stand up and say, I'm free. I am no longer an alcoholic. I'm no longer a drug user. I'm free from all that junk. And I'm going to live my life for Jesus and what he's called me to do. Praise God. Many of you have watched the show before. I've received a wonderful letter from a lady here a week ago. And in the letter, she told me that she had a son that needed to go to rehab and an attorney where the boy was in trouble, an attorney was representing this young man and said, I suggest the house of Isaiah. Well, she was a little disturbed about all that and the money and all the things that were going on with all that. And she didn't really know what to do about it. So her husband left that night and went out of town with her daughter and she went to bed about 9.30 and she just happened to turn on the television. And there Isaiah Robertson and I were in her bedroom talking to her from How to Beat the Odds. And she listened to what we had to say and about how the house of Isaiah was so effective and how it was turning these young men's lives completely around. She said her son didn't have a plan for his life and didn't care much about himself or anybody else. But you see, Isaiah Robertson came up to me a couple of weeks ago in Calvary and said, you see that young man that just walked up and received Jesus? His mother watched your television show, and that's how he ended up here. At the beginning of every show, you see my book, God and the Gambler. It's on the screen. You can call the number and get the book. It's completely free. We'll pay for the shipping. And it's a book about how God never gave up on me after 32 years of being a professional gambler and cheating people out of millions of dollars. God never gives up on any of us. So I encourage you, if you'd like to get the book or maybe you know someone that would like to read the book or if you know someone in prison or jail, we'll send it to them also. So let us hear from you. Well, I'm excited about my guest today, Maggie Thompson, because she ministers to a lost and hurting world. Street ministry, she has a small church over in Hemphill in Fort Worth, Texas, and people come in who are on heroin and drugs and, and are homeless and don't have any food to eat. And she feeds these people, ministers to these people, feeds them the Word of God. And when they become born again, then she talks to them about how Jesus can totally set them free. And then all of a sudden there'll be deliverance and someone will walk out of there set free from drugs or alcohol. It's an awesome ministry. 
and I want her to share her story with you, how she started out, and how she ended up in a ministry after a lot of years of not serving God. So right now, I want to introduce you to my guest, Maggie Thompson. Maggie, welcome to How to Beat the Odds. Thank you. You know, we talked several weeks ago about you coming, and we had it all set up, and it started raining real hard, and we couldn't really do the show. Yes. And the old devil tried to keep this show from happening. I think so. I think he did, too. <laughs> But we were talking when you were a young person, you weren't in church a lot, were you? Not a lot. No, and when you did go to a church, it was a denominational church, and, and you went there several times, but really wasn't what you were looking for, was it? You wanted more. I wanted more. And how did you find more? Well, I began searching. Finally heard about an old-fashioned tent revival near where I live. I went, and that's where I, my life turned around. Now, before you went, you told me that you heard Oral Roberts on the radio. Oh, yes. I uh, began to, to uh, glean from programs on the little radio we had. And he gave words of life that were really, it was really encouraging to me. And um, then I heard about the little tent revival and made up my mind to go. Now, did people try to talk you out of going? Yes, I had an auntie who did try to talk me out of going. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how that is, isn't it? <laughs> well, what happened when you got there? Oh, I could feel the presence of God under this tent, and I heard a message like I'd never heard before, a salvation message. You know, hellfire and, and, and brimstone message, but yet with love. And I'd never heard it before, all the years that I had attended church. But I knew I was lost. Nobody had to tell me I was lost. Even though you were in church now, a lot of people go to church and think that they're saved, but it's not doesn't work that way, does it? No. I, I joined the church more than once and was baptized in water, but there was no change in my heart. When you're born again, there's actually a change because the oh, Holy Spirit yes. comes to live inside and yes. you're a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. And you experienced that at the revival? Yes, I did. I couldn't wait to answer the altar call and I fell down on my knees in, in, in that tent meeting. And I did not know how to pray, what to say. But a little lady came and knelt beside me and began to pray as the way I really wanted to pray, but didn't know how. And she was saying, dear God, forgive me of all my sins. And I said, yes, that's what I want. And the whole plan of salvation unfolded from her beautiful little lips and come into my heart, Jesus. Yes, that's what I want. And I could literally feel burdens roll off my back. And I knew I had got saved, born again. I was forgiven. And that's what struck me the most is he washed my sins away. And it was as though I could really feel them lifting off my back. It was beautiful. But nobody could talk me out of it. Then I knew I was saved and born again. That's so important for all of us. We can sit in churches for years and years and years and think because we're going to church and hearing a man preach the word of God that we're automatically saved, that we're going to heaven, that we have salvation. But the Bible says very clearly we have to believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that God raised him from the dead and confess it with our mouth. It's so important. The Bible says whoever yes. calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, but we have to actually call on Him. And when we do that, the miracle of Christianity takes place. The Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us, and yes. we become the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. It's not our righteousness. It's His righteousness inside of us. We're as right in our spirit as we will ever be. And we'll always be that way in our spirit. Do we have to renew our mind? Of course we do. That's why the Bible says daily, we have to renew our mind with the Word of God. Because this old flesh, it's always contrary. It's got like an old computer up here, and those old thoughts will come back up again, and it'll try to get us to go where we don't want to go. Yes. And then the demons it talks about in the Bible, these fiery darts go in and say, don't you want to do some more drugs, or don't you want to go out and cheat on your wife or your husband? Mm -hmm. Those old thoughts will come back again and again and again. But the Bible said we cast down vain imaginations. Yes. How do we do that? by reinforcing our mind with the Word of God. This Word of God was inspired by men of God, anointed to write the Word of God. This is God's holy Bible. Yes. And when we read the Word of God and we're born again, the Word of God jumps off of this page into our spirit, mm -hmm. spirit to spirit. 
And it reinforces us and gives us wisdom and the Holy Spirit becomes our comforter. He gives us direction in our life and strength and understanding of God's Word. You say, well, I've read the Bible and I have a hard time understanding it sometimes. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom when you read this Bible. And it's not how much you read at one time. You may start reading this Bible and all of a sudden there'll be a paragraph in this Bible and your spirit will be quickened and you'll say, God's speaking to me. Yes. Stop and meditate on the Word of God. Amen. Get a notepad and a pencil and start writing down as God speaks to you in His Word. It'll be life-changing. Well, you began to realize yeah. all that after you got born again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you spend time in the Word after that? Oh, yes. It makes oh, you yes. hungry for it, oh, doesn't it? Oh, yes, it certainly does. Wow. Well, that's awesome. I'm so glad that happened to you. You know, I want to encourage everybody when they watch the show that being Spirit-filled and born again is so important. When the power of God comes on you and you ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit, it gives you yes. power for ministry and everything else that you oh, have yes. to deal with. Yes. Amen to that. Amen. We're going to come right back after some praise and worship. We're going to talk to Maggie you. Thompson again about her church, how she got married with the person that God put in her life, the right one that God had for her. And we'll come back and she's going to share with her, with all of us now, how she started her ministry, how she's reaching out to hurting people on the streets. We'll be right back after the praise and worship. How can I tell How great you What can I possibly say? The one who hung the stars in the sky Breathed life in this house of clay Wrote my name on the palms of his hands Hears me whenever I pray Who sees the sparrow Fall from the sky What can I possibly say? Welcome back. I'm talking to my guest, Maggie Thompson. 
You know, I want to share something with you. When God called me into the ministry 10 years ago, put a wonderful lady in my life and, and told me that God had called me all my life to be an evangelist. But I didn't take up that call until 10 years ago. Well, it all happened at a little church in Fort Worth, Texas. It was called City View Baptist Church. And I became good friends with the pastor, Dr. Burton Purvis. And for going there for a year and a half, God called me to go to Calvary Cathedral International, which is my home church now. God wanted me to go there to get planted in that church and to go to Bible school there. Well, I'm ordained out of that church now, but it was a difficult decision for me because Pastor Burton Purvis and I had become so close and City View was like a family church for me. But God said, no, I want you to go to Calvary Cathedral International. And I was obedient and I did that. And as I look back over the last eight years, I know why God wanted me there. I do a lot of prison and jail ministry for the church there and have been involved in the church doing different things for the ministry. Well, Maggie, you were involved in a church, and then God called you to another church. Yes, he did. Well, you heard God's voice. God spoke to you. But now you're going to that church for eight years, and you told me that God had you there in preparation for the ministry that you have today. Yes, I, I do know that now. And those eight years were just wonderful time of learning, uh, receiving teaching uh, through live satellite, and just a wonderful pastor. I gleaned so much through the years from Pastor Gloria Gillespie there. Wow. Well, when you're in the right place, I mean, God just speaks to you through his word and, and you just get revelation because when the pastor ministers and you're where God wants you to be, those words are for you. Right. That's why some people go around and you might be doing this. You may run from one church to another church and, and never really find a church home. But it's so important when you go into a church that God has for you and you have peace and that's where God wants you to stay planted in that church because God will have that minister or that pastor speak into your life every week because that's, that's where right. God wants you to be at that Amen. time. And that's what happened Amen. to you. You got yes. ministered to. Yes, I did. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, Maggie, you spent eight years at this church in preparation for your ministry, but you didn't really know where God wanted you to be. But then all of a sudden, God brought a young man in your life and you were trying to help this young man find a place to go because of what, drugs and alcohol? Yes. Well, what happened then? Well, I searched um, by phone, telephone, to find out where the rehabs were. I found that there was one right in Crowley, my hometown. And they housed, they said, around 72 men who were recovering from drugs and alcohol. And um, during the course of the conversation, I asked what um, they had for the spiritual part of their program. And they, I said, are there any ministers coming in, you know, to bring the gospel? And um, they, one of them, the assistant director, got quiet, and he said, maybe you can help with that. And I said, oh, yes, I can. But what I was thinking in my mind was, uh, I, will, I know ministers I can call because I could really see a white harvest. You could really see a white harvest? Yes, I could really see a white harvest there in that place. And they kind of offered you the opportunity to minister to there to those men, but in your natural mind, you thought, well, maybe a man would be better at that? Yes, I thought that. What did God think about it? He wanted me to go. <laughs> now, how did he reveal that to you? Well, I was sitting at my desk, and uh, I had been, right after I got off the phone, when, after the... Uh, assistant director said, maybe you can help with that. Well, then I began scribbling down names. And uh, I think Big Heart Ministries was the first one I wrote down. I was going to call this man because I'd heard he was really streetwise and really winning souls out there for the Lord. And scribbled down a few names. And then all of a sudden, the room filled with the glory of the Lord Jesus all of a sudden was there at the right-hand side of my chair, and I could not move. The presence of him was so glorious. And he said to me, I want you to go. And I was just really taken back. And I said, but Lord, I'm a woman. And once more, I heard his audible voice, and he said, I said, I want you to go. And I realized how I had been speaking kind of like Peter of old, you know. And I said, oh, Lord, I will go. I know nothing to do. I know 
not the first thing to do, but I'm willing to go. I will go. And then right after I said that, he was gone just as quick as he had appeared. But I couldn't move for around 30 minutes. The room was filled with his glory and his presence. I want to tell you, if you're watching this show, this is real. I've had many guests on this show that heard God's audible voice and totally changed the direction of their life. When we spend time with God and we're willing to do whatever he wants us to do, God will speak to our heart. And it's up to us. We have a choice. We can do it God's way or we can do it the way our natural mind yes. tells us to do it. But if we do it God's way and we take that step of faith, the Holy Spirit will come along with us, right there with us, and give us words to speak. Oh, yes. Anoint the words. It's not our words anyway. That's when right. When God brings those words out and we verbalize what He has in our spirit, that goes forth into people's hearts and yes. minds with the anointing of God. And that anointing is what will break the yoke of bondage oh, yes. in people's lives and draw them into the kingdom of God. It's so important just to be oh, yes. obedient to what God calls us yes, to do. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, so now you started going out and you started ministering to these men. Yes. And how did that work? Well, it was beautiful. Um, the Lord showed me every step to take. You know, the Holy Spirit began to give me things to do. And I started in my kitchen baking cakes and make it, making around seven to eight homemade lemon pound cakes a month for their graduation, birthday celebrations, and also gathering up good used clothing. You see, some of them, most of them who come off the streets have only what is on their back. And I would take the shirts and the clothing that I would gather and launder them, starch them, iron them myself, take wow. them into the rehab. And I was so happy when I saw the first little group of men coming in with starched white shirts on in the services. But they loved it. And they began to feel the love of the Lord. That's what we have to show people is the love of Jesus Christ. Without that love, we will not win them. It's, it's the love. And so the Holy Spirit showed me step by step everything to do. And then the day came when the Lord said, it's time for you to start holding services. And I did. And the first altar call I made, there were three men on the front row who just, they didn't walk up to receive Jesus. They almost ran to receive Jesus. And almost seven or eight gave their lives to Jesus. Each Sunday we held services. It was awesome. A great gathering in of those lost sheep. And do you know God delivered from alcohol and drugs and, and one man received a most wonderful miracle in his body, being healed of cancer. And I have to let you know about Brother Ossie Wesley, the Lord sent out to, to help at different intervals, point in time, and he was a blessing. He always told me, he said, uh, I'm just a little prop for you that God sent, but he would always send him at just the right time when I needed a little help. Praise God. Well, you know, God knows what we all need. And just yes. like he sent that man to help Maggie when it was time for her to stand up and minister, he came along and had a message at that particular time for those yes, people. Yes, he did. That's how God works. All we have to do is trust the Lord and step out into what he has for us. Yes. And he will truly do the rest. If we have our faith and our eyes on him, when we get our eyes on ourselves and we say, well, I'm, how am I going to do this? I remember I started ministering in the jails in the God pod. And I'd be up there ministering for two hours. And I didn't even know what I was going to minister on. Before I knew it, the two <laughs> hours was over because the Holy Spirit did yes. the whole thing. Amen. And that's how God yes. works. <laughs> Well, right now, you have your own church over on Hemp Hill. You're ministering to people every day. Yes. People are coming in off the streets and doing from the drugs and the alcohol, and you give them shelter, you lead them to the Lord. Well, and we don't have the shelter facilities as yet, but we, that's... You well, believe we, for we, that? Yes, we are. Amen, that's so important. <laughs> we need shelters. Well, I would, I would, here's what I would like for you to do. I would like for you to pray for people that are watching the show, that if God leads them into getting out on the streets or to minister in this kind of ministry, that they'll step out in faith and do what God's called them to do. Would you pray for people? I'd be happy to. All right, to. let's pray. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Father, I just ask you to speak to churches as a whole. Speak to your people, Lord, to get involved in street ministry. And Father, we know there would be such a great difference if the churches themselves would send people out two by two, just like our master did. Father, awaken your people to the need to go into the highways and the byways. Go to the hedges, the real hedges and the bushes that some of them have to go to. That's their shelter. They gather up cardboards for their home, their houses. Father, put upon the hearts of your people to go. And to those who can't go, Father, they can go by supporting all street ministries everywhere. There are such needs. And we thank you, God, for hearing this. And we just expect, Lord, to see what you're going to do. Because if we believe you hear us when we pray, then we have our petition. We don't doubt in our heart. Amen. Praise amen, God. Amen. Maggie, thank you for being on the show. You're welcome. What a blessing you are. Thank you. My pleasure. You know, when I see people out doing that kind of work on the streets and all and dealing with people with the drugs and alcohol like I do in the jails and prisons, it really ministers to my heart to see people who have answered the call that God has on their life to do that. It's not an easy ministry, but when God puts it on our heart to do it, His grace is truly sufficient. Oh, yes. If God has called you or put it on your heart after watching this show to get involved in that kind of ministry, prisons, jails, or street ministry, let me hear from you. Let me know if God put that in your heart. Um, once again, I want to thank you for watching the show. And we'll see you next time on How to Beat the Odds.